Welcome to the Art of Conscious Living. I'm so very, very pleased today to have as my guest Vivian Nautel. She is an incredible visionary artist, humanitarian, and an animal activist. And she is also writing a book that will be published next year. It's called Wake Up Baby. It's 500 pages of her spiritual life and her journey. And I'm so very, very honored to be able to speak with her today. Hmm. Namaste, Victoria. What a blessing to be here together. It has been a long time since you invited me on, on your show, and I couldn't make it. And actually, it's quite a miracle I'm here today, as you know. Um, I'm so happy. Very, very special moment. Thank you so much. Well, we have a lot to speak about, yes. and we have a very short time to do that within this hour. And let's start from the very beginning of where you are from. I know that you're from Montreal, Canada, and you are now living in California. And your art, when did that start? And your social activist for the animals. And you also have a spiritual master. Mm -hmm. You've had a number of them in the past, but you have a very present one that is your beloved now. And I'd yeah. really like to start at that place yeah. of your spiritual teacher. I see. Okay, with Sadhguru. Well, I've had three uh, beautiful spiritual masters. Sadhguru is my third one. And his name is uh, Jaggi Vasudev Sadhguru. Uh, he created uh, this beautiful foundation called Isha Foundation. And he came in my life very unexpectedly last year. Prior to that, I was with His Holiness Sri Sri Ravi Shankar from The Art of Living. I was with him for almost 10 years, and he's uh, another very beautiful uh, Sadhguru master, and um, many people know of him also. I was with him, like I said, almost 10 years. And my first one was um, uh, Yogi Raj Sadhguru Siddhanath, and uh, we were very close. He was like a father to me and I was with him only for two years. But what happened over the year, I never seek them. They just came into my life so very unexpectedly, and that's the way it should be, because um, we don't have control over those things. It's, um, it's the divine guide us, our inner guru guide us sometimes to, um, to attract certain being in our life accordingly to where we are on our spiritual path. And so when I was with Guruji, who is Sri Sri, my second master from the art of living, um, I thought I would be with him for the rest of my life. <laughs> and a lot of things happened with him. I grew tremendously, and it was very powerful. And, and then when Sadhguru came in my life so unexpectedly last year, I was like, wow, it was beyond. I realized that um, both of my master they had prepared me for Sadhguru to be with them uh, because um, what I have experienced with them so far has been just beyond phenomenal like he's such a beautiful enlightened master filled with so much light and and so much wisdom and and he's so powerful in transmitting uh, Shakti Pad which I would eventually would love to talk about this um, but Anyhow, so this is where I am. And it's true, I was born in Canada, Montreal, but I don't identify myself with where I was born. I always feel for me, my home is everywhere. Um, and so uh, my spiritual journey started the day I was born. I always been a seeker. And I even know some of my past life now from having some very powerful spiritual experiences. Being with Sagu for the last year a lot, a lot of things have happened on a spiritual level. And then I was able to see some of my past life. And so um, it doesn't matter where I go, you know, it's, our home is, the planet is, has become such a small village, you know, it doesn't matter. So. You have a spiritual name, Vivi Devi, and what does this mean, and your present teacher, when you say Shakti, what is this energy, and where are you going with the energy of the spirit in your life, and how does it transform in your life? There's a lot of people listening that are wondering what we're talking about, mm -hmm. and I see spirit as not an occasional thing. A lot of people, a greater amount of people, are 
thinking that perhaps spirit is something you do on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And it's something outside of us. It's mm -hmm. something that we have to obtain or the divine or the mm -hmm. God energy outside of us. Mm -hmm. My thoughts and my experience are that it's spirit and spiritual, these words that are misused, are consciousness. It's every moment of connecting to d divine love, connecting to your heart. When you are connected to your fullest potential, that is spirit in that moment. Mm -hmm. So it's not something extra. It's not something that you need to have outside of yourself. It's an experiential of, of the moment. Well, it's. I agree with everything you say. However, it's more than experiential. It's who we are. It's our being. We are enlightened. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's, it's not a concept, enlightenment. It's where pure divine love and bliss. And a lot of great masters, I've talked about that over the years. I mean, Yogananda was the first one to talk about, maybe not the first one, I take that back, I'm sorry. Um, but he talked about Ananda, you know, that we are Sachi Ananda, pure bliss, pure consciousness. It's our true, our true being, and that we can experience that in every moment of our life. It's our pure your breath, that's who we are. There's nothing else of our true nature is that. Um, what's happening is that most people over the years, from the day we're born, we accumulate <laughs> so much, as you know, from starting from childhood, from our parents and all the dysfunctional family and the dynamics that goes on and the abuse that is so prevalent in our society, unfortunately. And uh, that is a big factor uh, affecting most people, you know, that not being in touch with their true nature. And some other thing is authority and um, uh, the media is a huge part also. So we get so caught up in the illusion of this, this world um, that we forget who we are. So the journey of, of awakening, it's really about letting go, or maybe it's not the right way, maybe it's not the right word to say let it go. I don't know, sometimes semantic could be very tricky, but it's really about uh, shedding those layer of accumulation and brain brainwashing. You know, there's a lot of brainwashing that goes on as we grow, especially when we're children, we're so vulnerable, and uh, we take in so much un unconsciously, uh, and we don't realize it. And I believe in karma, and I, I didn't in the beginning. I went back and forth for many times over my life, but now I am sure because of what has happened to me on a spiritual level, and what I've experienced, other higher realm of, you know, higher consciousness, and like I have expressed earlier, I've had some vision of my past life, and I know in my heart and soul, now that was to me a confirmation of uh, my past life. So we bring with us karma as well that we need to uh, work out through this life that we are in. And so the journey is really about letting go, like I say, or just peeling off the layer. And then when all this starts shedding away, Victoria is like, you start feeling your own bliss, start feeling your own nature. And what I love so much about the yoga tradition, and that's why I want to talk about this, because I have been writing for Yoga Magazine since 2006. And it, this happened very naturally uh, over the course of the years. Um, after I was already a professional artist, a painter. And um, Something inside of me trigger about yoga, and I'm not when I'm referring to yoga. I'm not referring just asana. You know what we see in the yoga studio. I'm talking about the true ancient science of yoga. Yoga means uniting. It comes from the word yoke in Sanskrit. It means to unite in a union with the divine, and the divine is within ourself, and so. It's to reconnect with our inner guru. And that's what is so beautiful about having a spiritual master who is a true sad guru, which a sad guru means, also in Sanskrit, sad means a true, authentic, genuine, a true guru. And guru means 
Uh, it comes from the dispeller of light. It also comes from Sanskrit. It means the guru, when he comes into your life, or is she come into your life, she comes and helps to dispel the darkness, to bring the light from the ignorance to enlightenment. And that's the journey. And it's like what Sadhguru was saying is from stagnation to stillness. When you find that stillness inside of oneself, of yourself, you find your true nature, that you are are just pure divine creature. This is who we are, our own being. So the guru is so incredibly important. It's actually, I found for me, my own experience, and I'm sure a lot of other people would agree with me, it is such the most beautiful relationship anyone can experience. You can't really put it into words. It's it's something so very beautiful, the love that you feel for your guru, um, and the devotion, especially when you have devotion coming, and then, um, then the phenomenal things can happen. And to go further into your question, because it's a very deep question you ask me and I can't answer it just in one minute. Um, what happened with Sadhguru, um, we have to talk about Shakti. That's what you uh, related to your question. Shakti is also a term, um, ancient term, that comes from the Rishi, way back into the tradition of the yogic tradition. But before I talk about Shakti, I need to talk about someone very important, someone phenomenal and very beautiful, a being of light that some people have heard of, or maybe there's been some misconception about this, this being, is Shiva. Shiva, Shiva is the Adi Yogi the ID guru. And he, according to Sadhguru and all the Rishi, the ancient Rishi from the yoga tradition over thousands and thousands of years ago, including Patanjali, I'm sure you have heard of Patanjali, um, Shiva was the first yogi. He's the lord of the yogi and the yogini. He came on earth as a phenomenal being of light. And he brought the tradition of yoga, the science of yoga. And a lot of people get confused, Victoria, about what is yoga. Yoga is really an amazing tradition that is very rich in spirituality. It's, it's all what it is. And it's all about um, uniting within the divine, about all about the oneness of oneself. And so Shiva means at the time, they did not know all the Rishi. Actually, Rishi did not even exist at the time. There were some men who were very curious about this being of light, and all what they wanted was wanting to be with them, and he was very quiet. And finally, according to Saguru, and um, it's been said that uh, they started calling Shiva because he did not have a name, so it means that which is not. So they call him that which is not, which in their language means Shiva. So that's the way Shiva became to be known. So Shiva eventually, he saw the devotion of those seven beings who wanted to learn the knowledge of self-transformation and self-realization and, and God-realization, because they saw the beauty and the light, the power within Shiva. So, so the Rishi, so those seven um, beings became the Rishi and they started spreading the knowledge of yoga all throughout the planet. And that was, we're talking about like over 15,000 years ago, even before like, before religion even existed. And that's the way the tradition of yogic practices went on in the knowledge, especially Kriya. Kriya is the most powerful, according to my own experience, of course, what I've learned over the years, what I've experienced with other yogini and yogi and other seekers on the path, that Kriya is the yoga of transforming your own energy. And it's, I'm leaning like towards answering your question on Shakti, because I think it's important for the, our viewer that they understand the beginning, how it all happened. And um, so Shakti, it's the primordial energy of the universe. And that when Shiva talked about transforming oneself and realizing that we are God from within, he was working with the energy you know, with Shakti. And Shakti is being seen as the primordial feminine energy of the universe. And that, 
And Shiva also, beside the Adi Yogi, which is also viewed in the yogic tradition as the pure consciousness. So we have pure consciousness, which represents the principle, the, the masculine energy of pure consciousness, Shiva. And then we have Shakti, who is the feminine energy, which is pure primordial cosmic energy. So in the duality of this physical realm is what happens is the two, when they get together, that's when we see manifestation of this world. So within the yogic tradition, and all lineage of guru, that's very important, I bring this up, all comes to Shiva. Because if it was not because Shiva, the yoga tradition would not exist, and all the beautiful lineage of all lineage of guru, of all teacher would not exist. So you could see why I have a great reverence for, for Shiva. And I have experienced Shiva myself. I have seen him, I've been blessed, and that's why I feel like so important to bring Shiva. And so Shakti, when it comes to Shakti, Shiva, in the yoga tradition, they see those two consciousness and energy as Shiva Shakti. I'm sure you have heard of that, right? Shiva Shakti, and that's the journey Sagu says is all about um, going from one chakra, when the Kundalini energy starts waking, and it goes all through all the seven chakra, the most popular chakra, it pierces arch chakra, and it reached the top chakra and that's when full realization come about. Go Vivian, ahead. how does this translate on a practical daily way for you? The Kriya Yoga, my understanding is of science of mind. It is a way to be practical and use every moment of awakening and to, to be in the presence of, of now and to release all that tension that we we're talking about all of the childhood trauma or the conditioning this is a practical way of science to to keep balanced it's practical knowledge how is this work it's for an you? excellent question i am glad you brought that up because um, now that i have uh, set the foundation now we can go more into the benefits of mm -hmm. what kriya yoga is my life has been amazing with Kriya Yoga, um, and I'll go in depth about that. And you can stop me anytime because I. Well, I do see a lot of it in your art. So let's speak uh, about your art. Let's start with your art. Your art is absolutely phenomenally yeah. beautiful. Well, the and I see a lot of of the teachings and of your your teachers and of your spirit and of all your your beautiful energy from your heart is transformed into your art. So let's speak about your art and. Well, you asked me an important question that I would have loved to answer it. Um, um, we, we could talk about uh, Which Maya, is what? Which you wanted to know the benefits of Kriya Yoga. And I wanted to say before I forget, mm -hmm. Kriya Yoga, because I heard you mentioning about the, it's the science of the mind. It's actually not, um, if I may elaborate more on it. The whole idea is to let go of the mind. That's the problem. The mind get in the way. To really reconnect with our true nature, the mind has to get out of the way. It's like Sadhguru says, it's a, the shell, <laughs> we need to crack, to crack the shell, he was referring to the brain, because it gets in the way, you know, all the like and the dislike about things, and then the chattering mind and all that. Kriya Yoga, it's really, it means action. It means transforming energy. You can't really transform energy if you use your mind. You have to let go of the mind. The mind becomes a problem on the spiritual path. It has been my experience. Right, but Kriya, the techniques of Kriya are to let go of the mind. The, the, the uh, mantras, the techniques are all to stay in the present so the mind falls off. That's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I'm not saying using the mind okay. to get to do something. Yeah. It's 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 releasing of the mind, relinquishing of the mind with very, very powerful techniques. Yeah. I studied Kriya Yoga for ten years in, in Los Angeles at Yogananda. Yeah. And um, I know that when I take a plane ride, let's talk about practicality for instance. Uh, if you go on an eight-hour plane ride, you feel completely jet-lagged, extremely tired. But when I use the Kriya techniques right away as the plane is taking off, 
I feel like I've been on the plane for half an hour. Yeah. I feel so refreshed. Oh, yeah. It's because it's the, prana. It, 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 instead of using the Kriya Yoga technique, I mean, if I'm sitting there, I'm an ordinary mind would be saying, oh my God, I'm so bored. Oh my God, when am I going to get to New York? Oh my God, I can't breathe in here. Oh my God, my body is swollen. Oh my God, who's sitting beside me? I hear All you. these problems. But when you do the, the technique of the Kriya Yoga, you are totally watching your breath, you're in oh, your yeah. out breath. Mm -hmm. And you feel so balanced and yeah. so alive. Yeah. So well, that feels like a half an hour. So there's the practicality yeah. of letting go of the mind. Yeah. That's a very good example of that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I misunderstood what you meant. Uh, but yeah, indeed, it's the mind eventually just go away. Actually, the whole idea is not even to fill the body, yeah. it's to be completely in one with everything, all sating beings and everything. I mean, you reach a level where actually it's not even a, 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 a level where you reach, it's just it naturally, it unfolds naturally, you become one with everything and, and you don't feel your body anymore. It has happened to me very recently. But what's happening with Kriya? You Yoga is that is the prana, the prana, the life force, the energy comes from within, and um, and so when you breathe in, it it intoxicates every cell of our body with prana, with this life force energy, and it works on releasing trauma, past life, you know what we call in the yoga tradition. Uh, um, I think it's called as uh, sanskara. Sanskara is our impression mm -hmm. that they get locked into the cells of the body. And it's amazing how our body record everything. And so all the trauma, childhood, whatever it is, it starts going away. That's why some people, when they start practicing yoga, uh, yoga uh, Kriya Yoga, they often mourn and grieve. And there's a lot, sometimes even past lifetime comes out. There's a, a lot of purification that takes place. And that's what I wanted to say on a, on a physical, emotional, and mental mental level and so those are some of the benefits and some other benefits are the health benefit they're tremendously because like for instance with Sadhguru his techniques he call it the inner engineering oh my god they are so incredibly powerful um, as far as for health benefit, uh, they work uh, like magic for me. I have had a miracle when I went to his ashram in Tennessee last December, and it was just, and I like to talk about it uh, a little later, but because I want to answer your question about my art. Um, but and one last benefit about uh, powerful Kriya Yoga, such as the Sha Foundation with Sadhguru, is. Um, is awakening kundalini. Kundalini and shakti is the same in the yoga tradition. The rishi saw it as the same, and even so, sometimes in tantra they call it the, the serpent goddess. And I'm sure you've heard of uh, mm -hmm. a little bit about kundalini. I'm sure some of the viewers mm -hmm. have heard some of it, uh, which is the primordial energy uh, laying at the base of the spine. And the spine is extremely important, as that uh, guru talks about is the access to the universe and it's called the Mirudanda and that's where when the Kundalini awaken the Shakti start going through the chakra and rising when it's aroused by transmission from a Sadhguru from the Shakti Pad which are transmission of energy of primordial energy so when it start going up piercing each chakra it's the journey, like I was expressing a little bit earlier. It's the breath of fire of, of, of energy. Yeah, well, you feel the energy. And sometimes people don't feel it, but eventually the whole idea is to awaken the Kundalini. Mm -hmm. Everyone, it's the birthright to everyone. and uh, Everyone has it, right. but not everyone has their Kundalini awakened. And it's been said in the, in the yogic tradition, and I really believe that. So also from my own experience, not based on a belief, but on my experience, that Kundalini needs to be awakened by a true genuine master, a Sadhguru. Um, and I can tell you, it happened with me with Sadhguru. It was, it's so phenomenal. And uh, Swami Muktananda even talks about that in his book, Another Master and the Great... Uh, 
uh, first yogi who came to the Western um, in the Western Hemisphere in the 1893, who was uh, Swami Vivekananda, talks about that, that the true power of a Sadhguru is how we can transmit Shaktipad to awaken the seeker, or awaken the Kundalini, and to use this Shakti. And so, the other point that I want to bring is that when Kundalini arises, then what is being known as a phenomenal um, psycho transcendent um, experience is what a lot of masters call um, spontaneous kriya, spontaneous um, responses to Kundalini. And this is what has been happening with me with Sagu. Since I've been with him, my Kundalini has been <laughs> rising to the top and I have been having a lot of very powerful experiences and it's it's um, the body shake and tremble and the head, it, all those movements are absolutely normal. I mean, it's been said that um, you could, your hands could go into mudra, natural mudra, all kind of different kriya manifest within the seeker without you doing it. It's just involuntary. And I think you know about it because you read my article I wrote and I explained all my um, journey with Satguru so far. And I've been going into trances uh, that have been like so touched, so deeply touched by the divine and it's so very beautiful. And lately, I've even been talking in tongue, in this, a language, an ancient language, that I have no idea. And I've been going to those uh, very powerful trance and um, just um, been so blessed by the divine in that way. And uh, But like Sagu says, you know, being attached to those spiritual experiences is not the point. I like to share some of them. Hopefully we'll talk more about that. But it's important not to get attached to those things because all I want is the God. And it's all what we want is God, is to experience God from within. And that's what Shakti and Kundalini, when it rises, that's what you experience. To go in bliss and feel your true nature and and feel the divine, that you are divine, and well, realize the self. Begin, give me an example of feeling that Shakti in these moments for people who have not experienced that and dearly wonder about it, or even curiously have thought about it. What would that be like? What would that experience be like if you were to describe it? And I know, and then we'll have to pick up about your art too. Yeah, well, <laughs> I get tears in my eyes. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't describe. It's very beautiful. It's just imagine that God is there within you <laughs> and then you you feel God you know it's it's pure bliss it's 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 a sense that you don't exist anymore you have melted and and you become pure light pure consciousness it's very experiential and and is that source of divine love that touch you to the very core. I can describe a little bit in in the physical uh, aspect, the sensation. It's almost like when you receive a Shakti pad from your master, it's like being intoxicated with the purest of the purest drug and and it touch every cell of your body, it tickles you and it's so beautiful and and it's like you become one with everything, you're in love with everything. You're completely intoxicated with bliss and love. And I mean, how long does this feeling stay? Is it is it a constant or is it coming and going or is it is it a little bit less sometimes, and then sometimes a lot? It depends on the seeker, depending on... Oh, let's say you. Okay. Uh, for me, sometimes it lasts for days, sometimes it goes back and forth for a couple of hours, sometimes it goes for weeks. It's unsteady. Um, but I would say I, I am at a point right now with Sadhguru where we have been working. I have. 
attain a level where I'm very still and peaceful and serene. By the way, those tears are tears of joy because just to think about Sadhguru, what I've experienced with him is so beautiful. I'm just a tear of gratitude. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. I see this. It's so beautiful. I really want everyone to experience this beauty because that's who we are and and there's nothing else. Our true nature and our bliss. You know, that's the call of our era. It's the solution of all problems is to self-realize right now in this lifetime. For everyone, it really is the most beautiful thing. And um and it's to establish oneself into this, um, in this consciousness, this pure consciousness is, is also part of the spiritual journey. Well, regarding my art, since you asked me the question several times, um, I started channeling all of this way back um, when I graduated uh, from San Francisco State University. It was in 1999 at the turn of the century, and a lot of things happen at the turn of century. You'll be able to read about it in my book, Wake Up Baby, because it's a miracle I'm alive today. So many amazing, unbelievable story. The plane crash, which I think you read a little bit about uh, that I was involved, that had a huge impact on my art. Um, something happened on a metaphysical level that uh, was the beginning of my journey of awakening. I did not have any master at the time, and I was really seeking very deeply. I, the longing for the divine was there, was so deep in me, and um, my work completely changed at the time. Um, I started changing the energy and I, I would just create whatever that came and I would go into almost like trance when I would paint I would chant and I would cry I would raise my hand and I whatever came through me I just painted it and I was channeling that as a matter of fact if you see some of my painting like divinity where you see the two faces together mm -hmm. um, you see the male the figure and the female who are crossing to each other in the third eye, which is like the third eye of the universe. It, I didn't even know it represents Shiva Shakti. And um, Guru Nad, who was my first guru, Yogi Raj, Guru Nad, Siddha Nad, I was talking about when he came and stayed at our house um, in 2000, uh, at the turn of the century, it was like a couple of months later after the plane crash that Michael and I were involved with, uh, with Alaska Airline. Um, he saw that painting, he said, oh my God, Vivi, he said, this is Shiva Shakti. And I had no idea, I said, what is that? And he explained to me, and then that's when I started realizing what I was painting. I was channeling that Kundalini, awakening, and Shakti, and, and, and all of that. And that's, so all your paintings were a preparation for your masters and your teachers and all the energy that you're accepting. And I see that in my life also. All of the things that are the teachings and the learnings and the books and all of the classes or the conversations with great people of wisdom were preparing me for who I am today. It's oh, amazingly yes. oh, an yes. incredible journey when we look yeah. at it and we look at it from that experience that there's no accidents. It's no, all it's synchronicity of the Divine Mother. Absolutely. And it's from our own spirit. And um, and that's what's so beautiful about a sad guru, because the true um, meaning of this relationship is not to be subservient or it, when I mean losing the self and surrender to the divine within ourself and to the guru, it's there's no difference. Guru, self is the same and God is the same. There's only one thing. So the, 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 the true work of a sad guru is to awaken your own guru. So you fully awaken, fully God realize. And that, like you said so beautifully, Victoria, my work expressed that not only in my artwork, but also in my writing, mm -hmm. 
um, you'll see when you read, you have read some of my work and my poetry also, but my book expresses a lot of what I have lived and the longing over the years since I was a little girl and all the things that I've gone through, the major depression I have suffered, and um, also the major journey, health crisis, as you know, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage three. Um, How many years ago? It was five years ago, mm -hmm. and it's such a miracle. That's why I was saying in the beginning that I'm still here, because um, as you, I think you, I've shared with you a little bit, I almost died uh -huh. on my first chemotherapy. Um, oh my God, that was such an intense moment. Um, I was agonizing. I had a very severe adverse reaction and uh, I don't want to go too much into details about this because I talk about it in length in my book and it's a very poignant, very long story, but uh, it was during the Holy Week and I I was feeling this closeness to Jesus Christ. I always did. I love him so very dearly and I was agonizing on the couch and I I asked him to come and save me because I was literally dying and uh, instantly he came and that's what I talk about in my book, the, the beautiful miracle that happened with me and how I came back to life and by his grace and um, that I'm still here today to do the work that I want to do and I, in the meantime I have lost two of my dear girlfriend as a matter of fact. Um, one of them, Patricia, just passed away less than two weeks ago. And both of us, she was two years younger, and I, I don't know if I share that with you. Yes, yes. And both of them, Nancy and Patricia, were um, were both with me. We both, we were pretty much diagnosed pretty much at the same time and uh, went through the journey together. And um, I talk about it in my book. Yes. And both of them passed away, and I'm here today. I'm perfectly healthy by the grace of the divine and then Sadhguru is in my life and and has been so beautiful which lead me to a miracle I have to share that may I quickly yes, about I my aftermatch with uh, cancer was I think the hardest because I didn't expect it would be such a long journey to recover my immune system was completely destroyed my adrenal glands terror thyroid gland were completely destroyed and I was in such a state my health was horrible and so it took a lot to bring myself back and that to, was chemo and I had six months of intense chemotherapy I lost my hair my nails my eyelashes my mm -hmm. bra I mean talk about an experience where you become very humble it's a spiritual process and I took it very deep and what else did you take uh, three months of daily radiation and two major surgery. And what was interesting during that journey is that I went into silence for 10 days um, and I meditated five hours every day. And in the meantime, I was invited by the office of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. He was coming to San Francisco to do um, a special uh, teaching and uh, with Yoga Magazine, and so I was one of the few uh, people from the media to go and uh, to represent Yoga Magazine, and um, I was on chemotherapy. I was just coming out of silence after 10 days, and I had shaved my head. I had my head shaved by Martine, my hairstylist, and I was wearing a turban because it was cold. It was in March, and so I went to His Holiness, and I don't know how I did it, Victoria, to manage to do this teaching. I was brain dead completely. I had no energy, and uh, it's a miracle just I got there. The chemo was so hard on me, and but I did it for some reason. I, I know I could have taken a different path, and I know that. It was my choice, and I don't want to go into details now. It's all in my book. A uh, reader can read that in Lent. I don't want to take the time right now. But after the end of the teaching with His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, it was so beautiful uh, when he left. I actually gave him one of my artwork I had made for him, and um, at the end, 
um, I stayed there for an hour and I was like in deep meditation and I felt his energy and um, when I walked out of there I removed my turban and I felt so free and it was a beautiful day it was sunny and I just walked out with no makeup no hair nothing and I felt so liberated so it's amazing what such a crisis like this one when your life is threatening because I was at stage 3 cancer and that was already, already metastasized in my lymph node how one can really bring such a life crisis to such a surrender and to be able to connect, reconnect with your own divinity from within. And that's what happened with me. And like I said, I won't share with all the beautiful thing, it's in my book, so, but I think I've said a lot on that. But the adrenal fatigue was killing me because it was lingering, going on, going on, and it was severe adrenal fatigue. I was sleeping 12 hours a day, I was exhausted all day. I had very, I had almost no energy and you know how it is if you don't have energy, prana, it's like what do you do, you don't have a life and it was dragging for years and years. Even though I had period, it was a little better because I've been doing raw food and green juice, it helped. But you have to understand, I, my systems were destroyed and it was, I had to bring myself up and it needed more than just raw food and all of that. And it needed a miracle. And when Saguru came in my life, so unexpectedly, uh, when I went to do the um, second program, which is very advanced, with I learned the Shakti Shanada Kriya. I went there with such an open, receptive mind. Actually, I didn't even have a mind anymore, but heart, let's say. <laughs> And, and I was so unexpected. I had a miracle overnight, completely overnight. I was completely cured. I started getting up at 5.30 in the morning every day, feeling so energized, feeling so wonderful, so blissful and so happy and, and ecstasy and, and feeling really like full of energy. And since then, I've been pretty much getting up at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I sleep only six hours. And I do about three and a half to four hours of sadhana every day, which means spiritual practice, sadhana. And the kundalini has been <laughs> arising so high. And I feel sometimes that Guru is with me. I feel his presence. It doesn't matter, Victoria, where I am. He's always there. Right. I'd like to return back to the moment when you spoke about your first chemo and that you had a reverse reaction to it and you felt that you were dying and you said that you brought in the Christ-like energy. Now, I really like to explore that at this moment in time because there's a lot of people that think that you need to seek the energy outside of yourself, but you allowed your heart to open up. You were dying at that moment and you gave yourself over. So it was, it was like a rebirth happening at that moment. So it's very important that we clarify exactly what happened at that moment in time. You really want to make me cry, right? <laughs> I really want to experience that moment so we can really understand that moment in time because it's, it's very, very important for people to understand that. Well, it's the Christ energy. Like I said, it was the Holy Week and I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but I was laying there and I felt like Jesus Christ on the cross. I felt his pain. Christ and I, we were one at that moment. It was, there was no difference and I was on my cross. This was my cross. And, and I, 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 I felt this compassion for this being who came on earth, who was so beautiful and people have misunderstood his work. Such a beautiful master. Yes, he's the son of God. But we are children of God too. And he said that, Christ, he said, we are not of this world. We're not, we're, we're, how did he say that? We are, we're not of this world, but we are in it. And he refer all the time to the Father as his Father, so he our was the Father. Example. He was the example for us to be yes. our fullest potential. He and was at that moment, teaching. you were laying there and you were in your 
death of dying from this this toxic chemical and your and your. I was, was being poisoned. Your, yes, exactly. I was being poisoned. My brain. And you knew you were feeling death, and oh. you just gave yourself over to that beautiful, beautiful Christ-like energy. Well, and you connected with something of your higher, higher potential and your energy well, in you. Well, I felt his presence. Uh -huh. It was not just my own Christ consciousness, because it's the same Krishna, Mohammed consciousness. So the living Christ it's, energy it's, was there it's, in that it's moment. It's the same consciousness. Whatever we call it is the same the consciousness. Buddha. The Buddha's consciousness, yes. or even I could say Shiva's consciousness. Yes. It's all one so and the same. It's all the oneness consciousness. It's yes. all the same. But I felt the presence of Jesus himself. And what happened exactly at that moment? I, it was so beautiful. The moment happened. First of all, I have to explain to you, uh, to everyone, that the physical uh, symptoms, what was happening. I was white as a ghost. I saw myself when I, when I walked in, I was just coming back from the chemo, and I started feeling fainting. And I just happened to cross a mirror, and I saw myself in the mirror, and I got scared. And I was starting to feel that I was losing consciousness, and I saw myself, I looked like white. Mm. And I, I, I right away lay down on the couch and I called my husband and then I could feel it and my pressure was dropping and I was losing consciousness, losing consciousness. Suddenly I felt like I was agonizing and I was like in deep, deep, deep pain. I felt like knives crossing all over my intestine and pouring everything apart and my organs. I felt like I was going to throw up all my organs, my skull. I felt like my brain was going, it was coming out and I I can't describe what was I was I was dying. I was having a very severe adverse reaction. I couldn't even cry. I was agonizing in pain, and then I cried. I, I, I felt like I said the pain that Jesus felt on the cross, and I said I actually talked to Jesus in that moment. I said to you, Jesus, I said my pain is nothing compared to what I live right now, but I said, please spare me, you know, take it away from me. And it, it was, I think, probably because it was so genuine and so coming from such the soul that he came and, and the pain just went away. And it was so very beautiful. And I just laid there and I couldn't move my call. Actually, it was calling the emergency hospital and, um, and then he brought some compressed of cold water, and then finally he realized, I, I, I whispered to him, I said, I couldn't believe the pain was going away. And then I, in that moment, I, I felt his presence, and it was so beautiful. This is what I see in your photographs. You were attached to the chemo drip. You were sitting there uh, with the pole and walking around, and you also have other photographs where you're laying and receiving the chemo. There was so much love beaming from your eyes and your skin and, your, and deep from within you. It was so beautiful. And these photographs were so angelic. It's so fantastic. Thank you. I mean, it, it, you could see it. It was, it was amazingly affirming the presence of, of, of life and, and, and divinity well, at, at the same moment in time. Thank you. It's just, it's when you touch by your own divinity and by the creator whatever we call it god has hundreds thousands of name whatever we call it which has been the cause for so many religion it's time now to realize that all of us but it's like when you touch by that even in a moment of that you could attain enlightenment and Sadhguru talks a lot about that and it's when a lot of self-realization take place and that moment I would not exchange it for anything in the world even though I went through health on on a physical level and I like I said I explained a lot more in depth of my journey over five years what I went through but and from your book in wake my up wake baby. up baby a journey of yes. awakening but what came out of it, Victoria, is the most beautiful thing, and I would never change. I would never exchange that in the world, and the world of spirit yeah. really exists. I mean, it God really exists. Our Creator really exists, and that to me was a living proof. All the miracle happening, mm -hmm. and actually miracle 
don't really exist. We are a miracle. Just the fact we're breathing, we're a miracle. If people are confused about what is a miracle, a miracle happens every day. If people are just not awakened to see how just to be alive and be in the physical body is a miracle. Mm. I'd like to know that your title of your book is absolutely amazingly beautiful, Wake Up Baby. What does this mean to you? wake up baby and what would it mean to other people well it's the baby within ourself the baby who is so innocent and so maybe ignorant of of the true nature of the self the baby who is also so very pure and so very light and with no mind and the baby wants to know wonder who wants to discover the self and discover the talent and the magnitude of the magnificence of our being. And that baby, we all have that within ourselves. We lose touch with that baby within ourselves. You know, that childlike quality of, of, of just being the moment and be spontaneous and to be in our true nature. So the title actually, I did not create it. I was not thinking about it. this comes from spirit. I, what happened, Victoria, is that I started writing hundreds of different names that did not even come close to that name. And I said, oh, not hundreds, but maybe like a dozen, maybe 25 or 50. I know I wrote many, but, and I let it go. I said, ah, oh, the title will never come that way. So what I did, I just let it go. I know the Divine Mother will, to me, I called the, our creator the Divine Mother. Like I said, we doesn't matter what is the name of God. Actually, what's interesting is Ananda Mari Mima, who is a very beautiful holy saint from the 20th century, said that, uh, you know, God has hundreds of names, all different names, doesn't matter what we call God, it has all the same power. So to me, is the Divine Mother. So I said, okay, I'm going to sit down and meditate. I'm sure the time will eventually came, come. And that's what happened. I don't know if it happened right mm. away in the first day, but it was completely out of my mind and uh, out of my um, and my thoughts. And I was sitting and I was in deep meditation and suddenly I heard, wake up baby. <laughs> and I, I was like, I went like this and I was shaking a little bit. And, and when I came out of meditation, I said, oh my God. I didn't realize it when I was meditating, but after when I came out, I said, that's the title of my book. That's Wake Up Baby. And what does the wake up mean to you and what would it mean to others? The baby is beautifully illustrated, very, very beautifully and very simply. The wake up part, that can be the challenge for the people now. What does the wake up part mean? Wake up is just um, waking up from this slumber that we most people are in, being caught up in the mundane life, which it's it's a very important life. While we're in the body temple, we want to make the best out of, of, of our life. We want to be happy. But most people, we believe, we seek happiness. And it's true, we do seek happiness. We all, don't you agree? That's what we seek. I mean... We uh, seek it through the senses. Through, yeah. Through being, trying to be happy for the moment. Or trying yeah. to seek pleasure, which are very short-ended means. Exactly. But in the... In the deepness of our soul, of our true nature, what I call the cry of the soul is, is really... The cry of the soul? Yes, mm -hmm. I call it the cry of the soul. Longing is the cry of the soul. And that to me, that's the reason why I am where I am today, by the grace of my own longing for my cry of my soul. And I think that's what it is about waking up. Wake Up Baby is about to really sitting for a moment and be still and to really listen to one's soul, to listen to our soul who is crying. It's really beyond happiness. It's about that longing. The soul wants to unite, to be in that ecstasy, in that union with the divine. And no separation from others. It's an illusion. Merging with everybody and it's an we illusion. are all one together. There is no complete island of self. It is that we are all together, everyone, no matter yes. who. 
Yeah, it's a big, that's the big illusion. It's the big awakening is that that the separation does not exist. Mm. The animals, nature, the tree, everything. It's that we. It's. I know sometimes the semantic of the words confuse people because they get stuck in the mind with the intellect. But experientially what it is, is that that illusion, like in the Buddhist tradition they call it maya, but whatever we call it is, is, is that when we are listening to that longing, when we finally listen to our soul, that's the beginning of the true spiritual awakening. And then the journey begin really and then we can really finally merge with the union within the divine within our we truth. have some very final moments here oh this already this, I can't this hour it has gone by very very quick it was like a second. and I invite you back of course but what would you like to share for the very final moments very briefly for others if you were to give them one survival tip, one idea that you could want to leave with others that would be the most dear to your heart and to your from your experience, what would that be? Well, I want everyone to know that the divine is within within yourself and um, it's the most beautiful thing and that you all are very divine and and that not to waste time to listen to that longing within and to ask for guidance and to let the divine welcome that beautiful and experience that beautiful divine love flowing through. And when that blossom, everything else blossom in one's life. It's just natural. I mean, success, happiness, joy, and bliss all comes. And I invite everyone to come and discover Sadhguru, Jaggi Vasudev Sadhguru, because He's so very beautiful. He has so much to offer, and his inner engineering technologies program of self-realization is beyond phenomenal. And if you are ready, Sadhguru said, uh, "Deepen your longing. We don't choose our guru; the guru will choose us. Just deepen your longing." And uh, he also said that uh, God is always at the doorstep, all the time and we just need to make the space. And so I'm asking everyone, please make that space within yourself. And if the magic happened, it's so very beautiful. And I really want every sitting beings to experience that. It's so very beautiful. And thank you so much. And I bless everybody. I send a lot of divine love to everyone and to you. And thank you so much for inviting me. I'm, I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And it's been an absolute honor to sit and talk with you and to share your spirit with you. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. I'm so happy. Namaste. And from the art of conscious living, do take care of yourself and take care of others. Thank you.